All right, everybody, welcome to Unscripted One-on-One -on -one and a special guest today, especially from a guy that uh, grew up in Cleveland, diehard Cleveland Indians fan. Um, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and, and uh, we'll go from there. Uh, my name is Vinny Pistano. I'm a retired Major League Baseball pitcher turned realtor, uh, currently in Columbus, Ohio. So thanks for having me. Yeah. Well, I, this is exciting. You, uh, you've you been a, um, a good friend here uh, the last couple of years. I don't know, two, three years, I guess it is in, in Columbus. And uh, especially I've mentioned on multiple podcasts, but especially to my son, who's a pitcher, um, you know, and I'll probably mention this again before we, we close out. But uh, one of the things that I'll, I'll always, you know, appreciate and cherish is that um, you took time to send him some texts when he was in high school and hit that patch that every, every pitcher goes through and uh, the mm -hmm. mental side. And, you know, there's a lot of guys that can help him with his arm, but uh, you helped him with that mental space. And I, I very much appreciated that. So um, it's, it's really an honor to have you on, and especially as an Indians fan and, and, you know, <laughs> Oh yeah, of course. Of course. <laughs> I, for, I forgot we're on podcast, so they can't see that, but I just showed him my Raiders sweatshirt because Vinny and I have a, a common love for our Las, Las Vegas. Is that where we are Las now? Vegas. I've, I've, I've got some Vegas gear on the way. Oh, nice. Our, our Vegas Raiders. So, uh, so yeah, but uh, so man, why don't you just start off telling us a little bit about college um, minors, majors, you know, take us through, if you could just take us through your, uh, your journey to, uh, to the major leagues. Yeah. I mean, it was, uh, it was interesting to, to say the least starting out uh, with college um, you know, I felt like I was a, a good high school pitcher. Uh, I went to a good baseball, uh, college baseball school in, in uh, Cal State, Florida. And, uh, you know, we had, uh, we had our fall practice and um, we were no, no off speed as far as curveball slider, stuff like that. It was fastball change only. So I guess there was off speed, but uh, changes fastball only. I didn't have a very good changeup, but I thought I had a good fastball. And uh, after uh, all of our fall work was done, um, I ranked 14th out of 16 possible pitchers um, in our program. And 16 and 15 ended up getting cut. So um, it was kind of a reality check for me at that point, going from high school where, you know, I, I had a good uh, high school career and then going into college and just absolutely getting, getting turned around. So um, I had to make some adjustments. Um, Going into uh, the winter, I was doing some bullpens in the winter. My pitching coach just kind of uh, mentioned, hey, why don't you try, you know, dropping down um, sidearm on one. And I did. And, you know, the, I didn't really lose much velocity-wise, but I gained a lot more movement, which I had been missing. And I found out the difference between a, a faster flat fastball and one slightly slower that moves a little bit um, was definitely more productive and ended up uh, having a really good spring. Um, once those practices started and uh, ended up making the 25 man travel roster and um, was one of our most utilized uh, people out of the pen in a pen that, you know, we had three freshmen in, in, in our bullpen that year. And, um, you know, I, I wasn't anywhere near the pitcher. I would end up being, you know, my sophomore and my junior year at that point, because, you know, I'm trying to learn how to throw yeah. a slider from sidearm, you know, in, in, uh, in a couple months and stuff like that. But, um, I was part of possibly the worst, best uh, baseball team, maybe in collegiate history, because uh, our uh, our team at Cal State Florida and Titans, uh, we started the year off 15 and 16, and we were on record to be quite possibly uh, the worst team in, in our school's history. I think we ended up rattling off like 33 of our next 36 or on those lines and ended up winning a national championship. Um, pretty crazy turnaround. So it's definitely a tale of two, uh, two, uh, you know, two seasons for our, for our baseball team, but also the, the start to my college career because I ended up dropping down, which I ended up throwing, you know, sidearm or, or a low three quarters until I retired a few years ago. So you made, and that's crazy. You made an adjustment. Like that's not an adjustment. You just make in the bullpen before you go out and throw <laughs> that. That's, <laughs> That, right? I mean, it sounds like, but that's kind of sounds like what you did, like almost on the fly. Like, hey, why don't you give this a shot? Have you ever thrown side sidearm before that? Or was it just literally like, well, let me give it a shot? No, I mean, I was, 
I was probably a, a three quarter arm slot in, okay. in high school. So I wasn't over the top. I wasn't like an extreme stretch. It was more, um, it was more, a little more bend in my upper body um, and trying to keep that, that arm, making sure the elbow didn't get super, super low before my, uh, below my shoulder. But um, yeah, it wasn't really that bad of a transition for me. Um, you know, the, the positives outweigh the negatives. Um, you know, I, I knew my curveball in, in high school wasn't, you know, otherworldly. And obviously I told you that my changeup was, was pretty dumpy too, but I feel like I had a good fastball, but it was going to be flat. And if I'm, if I'm going up, up against these guys who are sophomores and juniors at, at the collegiate level around Paul, um, you know, when we get in season. So it, yeah. it's, uh, it's one of those career defining moments that, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for, for a pitching coach, Dave Serrano at the time, um, for kind of making that adjustment and uh, just trying something out, you know, yeah. throwing some spaghetti against the wall and seeing if it sticks. <laughs> and um, it happened too. And, you know, happy that it did. Yeah. You know, well, it worked, it turned out okay. Right. <laughs> it turned out all right for you. It, it, uh, it turned out all right. So, so that takes you to, um, when 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 did you know or, or let me ask you this when did you or did you ever say i want to play in the major leagues or was it just a process that you just continued to kind of grow into and you said you know i, I have a shot at playing in the major leagues and then it was well i got drafted to play you know what i mean was it or was it a goal from day one did you get up every morning i want to play in the major leagues or, you know what i mean was there or somewhere in between yeah you know always on the um, the back end was, was a dream of pitching, you know, in the major leagues. And I think everybody kind of has everybody that, you know, plays, uh, you know, competitively in high school and college, they have that, that idea, that dream that, yeah, that would be great if I ended up there. Uh, but I had a bunch of smaller goals that I had, kinda, that, you know, if I hit those that I'd be able to continue my, my journey a little bit. And everything was kind of just, you know, one more rung in the ladder. Um, yeah. I wanted to be, you know, uh, pitch on our varsity team in high school as a freshman and and that was my goal going into there and I knew if I could do that then you know um, you know, I put myself in a good spot and you know after uh, after my sophomore year I wanted to be you know the guy I wanted yeah. to be be the number one and um, you know I, I wanted to win you know a, a high school state championship and I wanted to be all league and uh, you know, that just kind of grew into, you know, uh, narrowing down where I wanted to go to college. I knew I wanted to go to Cal State Fullerton. So what did I need to do to get, you know, be ready to, to play baseball at that school? And um, once I made it there, it's like, okay, well, now it's, you know, making the 25-man roster. Now it's, you know, um, all Big West, all American. It's, it's you know, national championships. And you start getting a little deeper into that. And now it's, you know, putting yourself in a good position to get drafted. And, and, and all that sort of thing. So, um, you know, it's all working towards that goal. But, you know, when I was in high school, I, I didn't, I didn't work to, to be a major league pitcher. I worked to be the best pitcher I could at, at the level I was at. Yeah. Well, and let me ask you this. So you get, you get drafted and uh, who did, who did you get drafted by? Indians. The Indians. Okay. So, so you stayed with the same organization until you were traded. So let, let me ask you those two things. What was it like getting drafted by? So you're you're a California guy, and <laughs> knowing mm -hmm. you're coming to, yeah. and you look. Everybody that listens to this knows that nobody nobody loves Cleveland more than I do. Um, I, I would I would fight anybody on the fact that I, I love me some Cleveland. <laughs> so um, I'm certainly not knocking the city, but you know, you get drafted, you get the call, you're going to the Cleveland Indians um, from California. What was that like? And then you know, and, and yeah. So what was that like? We'll we'll start there. Yeah, I mean it was. Uh... I mean, as, as with everything else that, that I've discussed so far, it's, it's pretty, pretty untraditional process. Uh, my junior year of college, I'm having a good year. Um, I think I, have, I was working on a sub one ERA or very close to it. Um, pitched in the midweek game, heard a pop of my elbow uh, about a month before the draft. And, and that was kind of it. That was, that was the last pitch I threw in college. Um, I tried playing catch. I tried playing through it. Um, I tried getting to a spot where, where I could be competitive on the mound, mostly because our, our, our team was making another run at the College World Series, and I wanted to be a part of that. Um, and, 
you know, through, through that process, once that happened, you know, my, my, my conversations and my interviews with teams and stuff like that really, really slowed down. And, um, I was, I was, you know, reassured by, by some people and, and at the time that, you know, it wasn't going to hurt my, my draft stock that, um, you know, it's, you know, it's, it was unsure at that point what it was. Um, I, I'd had a couple MRIs. One, um, was, uh, they really see much because it was it was too soon after the injury, and the second one, uh, the the didn't really see any uh, any major damage in there, so I was, I was hopeful for that. But, but throwing the baseball, I had, I kind of knew something else was was going on in there, and found out right around the draft uh, after I got my third MRI, I ended up getting the contrast MRI where they shoot the dye in there, um, that I had a ligament tear, and that uh, Tommy John surgery was going to be needed if I wanted to keep playing. So. Um, you know, once, once that kind of happened, it was, was, I didn't know what was going to happen when the draft came around. I didn't know, um, this was, was kind of planned out at that point. I mean, I'm up for the draft and, um, I felt things were going, uh, going really well that, that year and just kind of, uh, got turned upside down. So, um, fast forward to the draft, first day comes. Um, back then, I think they did. Um, it's not as um, NFL like anymore. I, I get it the first like, you know, 16 or 18 rounds in the first day, and uh, day one came and, and my name didn't get called. Mm-hmm. So, um, uh, there's some guys that that uh, got their continue their their journey through, um, through their, uh, through their, you know, dreams and stuff like that. And, and I didn't know what was going on. So we went out to celebrate, you know, the successes of them and, yeah. and kind of went out to celebrate the, the, the failures of, uh, the guys whose names didn't get called. And I remember getting a phone call early in the morning the next day. Um, I, uh, I pick up the phone and, uh, the, the phone call had woke me up. And uh, I was kind of, kind of groggy at the time. And um, Jason Smith with the Cleveland Indians, um, you know, we're taking it here in the 20th round. So then you get drafted. Um, how, how many years did you spend in the minors? Or was it a pretty fast track before you made it to Cleveland? Uh, about four years. So um, tech, tech, technically, I, I got drafted in 2006. But um, – my first um, professional innings didn't come in 2007 because of recovery from, from Tommy John. Fast recovery is about 10 months between surgery and, and games. And uh, so 2007 was my first, uh, my first day in pro ball, the Mahoning Valley Scrappers, the short <laughs> season A team up in, uh, up in Niles County. Um, so, uh, or Niles, Ohio. Maybe they got the county wrong, but anyways. Um, but yeah, uh, and then 2010, end of September is when I got my uh, got my first uh, big league innings. So about about four seasons. Do you remember who the first person you struck out was? Uh, I think Billy Butler. Really? Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. And, yeah. and uh, so. Now, and you'll have to remind me, as much as I love my, my Cleveland Indians, who was the manager when you got there? Manny Acton. Okay. All right. And did you guys ever make the playoffs when you were there? Uh, not, not with Manny. Um, in 13, uh, Tito's first year, uh, wild card game, and then 14 the year got traded. I was with the Angels um, right. come playoff time, but um, not, with, uh, not with Manny. So not to fly through your Cleveland career because that, that was decorated. And, and as a, as an Indians fan, I appreciated your, your work there <laughs> coming out of that bullpen. <laughs> that bullpen was, was tough. Um, Cause it was you, uh, Chris Perez was the closer, right? And then you actually, and I mm-hmm. correct me if I'm wrong, but um, didn't you come in and close at, at some point too? Didn't you kind of at least take the, the closer role for a bit? Uh, I, I filled in, in, uh, in some certain spots. Um, you know, I think I had six legit save uh, opportunities. Um, 
setup guy, but I think I had uh, six actual uh, sales. Being a uh, night inning guy. Um, okay. So, what is it like when you get the call, or, or how, how does it go? When you're, or did they just come to you and say, we got some bad news, or what is that like? Your agent call you? How does that happen when you get traded in the major leagues? Uh, traded or called up? Sorry, traded. I didn't think. Let's, yeah, let's, traded. yeah, let's go traded. They, they, what's that like? Uh, it was. Uh, it was pretty quick. Um, you know, we were in, in Slovenia um, playing, and um, you know, I was I was I was up and down in, in thirteen, and and up and down in fourteen, and um, I made the team. I I got sent down in like the first ten days because I just I just wasn't. And so I decided to rework my mechanics, and about a month and a half later, I ended up getting called up. Uh, through you know, maybe 12 or 11 appearances, uh, not not all one inning appearances, but uh, had ended up getting like one run, I think, to like Brett Gardner, like one of my last appearances. And they called me into the office and said I was going back down. And I was uh, like, you know, I've, I've, my, my strikeout to walk ratio was, was really good. My inherited runner scored, uh, was really good. It just didn't really make sense to me. Um, you know, at the time, why I was going down, obviously roster moves have to happen, but I didn't know I, you know, I was a particular guy that had to, you know, wear that in that instance. Um, you know, and kind of face and talk to my and afterwards and was like, I think, I think my, my time here is done. Like, I don't know what more I can do to stay, stay up here. And uh, I think maybe, couple weeks later was when I was going to get traded to uh, to the Angels. So, um, you know, it, it wasn't that big of a surprise. I, I'd say I was kind of hoping for a trade at that point because I was, you know, hoping to get some some new blood with a new team. Um, I, I definitely didn't want to finish out the year and, and trip feeling like eat at the big league level because I, I, I know what you need to compete at the big league level. And if I felt like I had that, then I didn't want to waste my time in AAA. So, um, and getting traded on the road in Scranton and flew to Salt Lake City from there and left my truck and all my clothes and all my belongings in Columbus and um, had to, had the clubhouse manager here kind of pack everything up and got my truck shipped out later. Wow. And then, so, but it had to be exciting to go back home, right, to California. Were you excited to, uh, I mean, because so many times the, the few guys, you know, that I have talked to, I know that, that everything's about opportunity. You know, it's, mm -hmm. you could be on the perfect team and then you get traded and all of a sudden you're, you know, four or five back in the, in the pecking order when, all, you know, you could be on a team that's trying to rebuild, which you could possibly see major league time right away. Was it exciting to go back? Because I got to think the Angels were probably very competitive and maybe in a playoff run at that time, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they ended up winning, well, I would like to say we, because I was on the team when they did it, but um, not not for the long haul, but uh, we ended up winning the uh, AL West that year. Um, so that was fun. Um, and yeah, I mean, I got uh, I got traded over there um, end of August and we came up and made that September run with them. Um, and yeah, that was great. I mean, I, I wasn't necessarily an Angel fan growing up. I was more of a fan of the game of baseball, but I remember going to playoff games and watching guys like Tim Salmon and Jim Edmonds and Mo Vaughn and yeah. um, Darren Erstad and mm -hmm. uh, I mean, all those guys. Um, and uh, no, it, it was fun to definitely be in that stadium playing where I had, I had seen some games growing up. Yeah. So uh, what is it like um, – have you so here here's a weird question the there's got to be some kind of juice and adrenaline that that pumps through your veins when you get the call down to the pen you just got warmed up it's uh base is loaded and they call on you to come out here there's two outs base is loaded you're out there to get one guy or two whatever it might be what's that like when that door opens in that bullpen let's just call it progressive field even though it's still jacobs field door opens <laughs> crowds just going nuts um always like you know 
they're always doing like ads and stuff like that. And then they're like, oh yeah, by the way, this guy's in the game. And then they pay like 10 seconds of your song. So it, it really wasn't that big of a deal. Um, I mean, Cole just got all the credit. Everybody knows that. Um, get the easiest job in the world. Um, <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The eighth inning guy has to come in and face, you know, one, two, three, two, three, four. In the eighth inning, the closer comes in and gets seven, eight, nine. And he's the hero. <laughs> it's um, the truth. It's truth. Um, but no, there's a, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, it's a huge adrenaline rush, one that I haven't been able to match uh, right. outside of baseball, mostly because I'm scared of most things that would give me adrenaline, <laughs> like roller coasters <laughs> and, and heights. So, um, you know, no, it was it was great. And then, you know, if you've ever seen me come into a game, um, you know, I was uh, I was pretty full bore once that once that gate opened. I, I sprinted in from the outfield, so um, I was excited and fired up to get in there, especially in the situation you just described. Like I wanted to be that guy that, you know, the, the team relied on. I wanted the ball in my hand when when the game was either going to swing one way or the next. And you know, regardless if it's um, you know, your, your ace out there, Justin Masterson, who's just blowing guys away all the game. And, um, you know, I I wanted to be the person to, to go in there, take that ball and be like, hey, I, I got you. Like, yeah, this is in good hands. And, yeah. and uh, um, you know, those, those are the situations that I live for. You know, when you're when there's nobody on and you're down by 10 or you're up by 10, you know, those, those aren't the – big energy moments and you have to kind of create energy and and trick yourself into believing that the moment's kind of bigger than it is because those are games where you can like slip up and and give up two or three and then put yourself in you know you know behind the eight ball statistically for a while so um no i mean if you if you give up three runs in an outing which which happens i mean it's not it's not that difficult i mean you're looking at nine scoreless just to get your era you know back down to a three so i mean it's you get those crooked numbers in the bullpen, especially when you only get one or two outs and you have a home run, you know, for a couple. Well, it's it's hard to kind of chip chip away at that. And then the crowd doesn't let you forget it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, depending where you're at. <laughs> the sports. So, did you listen to sports talk radio at all? No. Yeah. No, I was, I'd never be radio guy. I always I always had my playlists. Um, if I didn't know you and I didn't you know respect you, then then your opinion really didn't really didn't matter to me. I mean, you could say anything. I mean, even to this day, if somebody were to come up to me and be like, hey, man, like, what the hell happened? You know, because <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. You know, I, I wouldn't really take offense, but, you know, I I did the best I could and try to do the most I could with the time I had. Yeah, well, you did a great job. Uh, and I was a fan. I'm still a fan, always a fan. Um, and, and I love those teams, too, because those teams weren't uber talented, but – um, but they always maximize what they have, which is the Cleveland story for the most part. I mean, a couple of years we had, obviously the nineties was a little different run. Um, but, you know, ever since then, they, they've really just scrapped and clawed and, and they found guys that just gave everything they had. And so I, I, I always, always cheer for the Indians for that reason. But one of these days they'll, they'll make it back to the show again, I guess. <laughs> so, all right. So let's transition. Life in baseball starts to come to an end. What mm-hmm. um, I know what you're doing now, and, uh, and at what point did you say, you know what, it's it's time? Like, wh- when did you when did you just know it's it's time to move on? Yeah, to I, that space? I, I battled some shoulder injuries. I was in 2016 uh, with the Yankees when I hurt my shoulder. Uh, I had a tear in my labrum and a hole in my rotator cuff. Uh, did some cortisone um, shots to try and help get that under control, and I felt like I was getting back to a good spot. Um, kind of told my pitching coach at the time that I was ready to go right before the all-star break in 2016. He's like, all right, I'll let everybody know. Came into the field the next day, got activated and released. Um, and uh, that, was, that was super surprising at the time. And, uh, you know, from then on, it was just, just a battle with my shoulder trying to prove that I was healthy. And, um Look for for spring training in 2017. So I ended up playing uh, independent baseball up in the uh, the Northeast in the Atlantic League, um, and then played there a, a little bit in 2018. And my shoulder would go through these points where it would feel really good, and I'd feel like you know this is going really well, and it just gets fatigued and just kind of uh, get tired and fail on me, and my velocity would dip down. And you, you decide 
you know, it's time. And, and now, now I guess we can, can move to what, what are you doing now? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm in, uh, I'm in real estate now. Uh, excited to be in that, been in that since, uh, since April, yeah, April of, of last year. Uh, it's, it's been a good transition, just like anything else, uh, a new career. It's, it's fun and it's, it's, uh, it's exciting. It's a lot to learn. Um, not only the real estate side of things, but different systems and programs and stuff like that. It was kind of like drinking water out of a fire hose for the first couple of months. Yeah. Uh, but now that I'm, I'm in it, um, I'm more established. Um, you know, it's, it's an interesting time to be a real estate agent uh, in, in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, we've got an extremely tough market. Yeah. Very competitive and, uh, you know, my previous career, uh, you know, affords me to, um, to be a, be a little slower, not have any ego, you know, when I'm talking to, you know, other, other people in the industry or, or, uh, you know, negotiating, like, this isn't about me. Like, this, this is about, you know, my client and, and, uh, and what's best for them and their family. And, you know, I'm not, you know, tied to a contract going through and stuff like that. And I'm not, you know, necessarily trying to, to push stuff through when, when possibly it shouldn't. So, um, you know, and, and that's the way I think it, it should be like, you should have nothing but, but positive, uh, memories of it. I mean, yeah, I've, I've lost contracts with clients and you know, that, that's, that stinks because I mean, every home that somebody bids on, it means that they see them and their family in it. Yeah. And you're not always the winner, but you can't control how other people are going to spend their money. I've had clients go $21,000 over list price this year. And, and that's with giving up, you know, any type of um, asking for any type of remedies after the inspection period um, and things like that. So th there's some people out there that are doing crazy things with their, <laughs> with their money. And yeah. um, if, if that's what, you know, they feel is in their best interest for their family, then that's great. But um, I, I always caution my clients about, uh, you know, pushing the bar too high just because it's, it just, you know, you don't know who else is out there that's going <laughs> to, you know, not care about, you know, going a little bit more and a little bit beyond. Yeah. And it sounds like there's plenty of other options on the market right now, based on what you said. Uh, there's, there's plenty of other houses, so you don't have to, uh, you don't have to buy the first one you find, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's one of those things where we help people with new builds too. Um, you know, just cause you're going to um, a builder doesn't mean you shouldn't have any type of representation. We can be a sounding board for you. Um, a builder's, a, a builder's, a realtor's best job, um, you know, is shown when, when something is, is off, when something goes wrong. Um, you know, a good, easy transaction, we have much to do with outside of, you know, negotiating that, that original list price and terms. And then if something comes up with, uh, with financing or, appraisals and, and a lot of other stuff um you know we can kind of step in and and help uh you know steady those waters a little bit but um we're there for you know when things go bad and you need somebody to go to bat for you and battle for you um you know that's that's where most of our value comes from so you know having having us involved even with a new build is important because we can be that sounding board for you with the builder yeah well, it's, uh, it's been an exciting journey to get to where you are today. And, and um, we've had a, a lot of technical issues, on, at least on my side, I've seen a lot. So I want to make sure that everybody um, understands that you are available. You're in Dublin. Are you in Dublin still? Is yeah, right? yeah, still in Dublin. Okay. So you're in Dublin. Um, that is what you are up to nowadays. It's, uh, it's an exciting you know, new venture for you that, as you transition now into that the next phase. Um, also, lovely wife child right any any thank other news you, you, you need to break or is that <laughs> no no oh, okay. we're just uh we just uh got our condo in contract actually so we're, we'll be we'll be moving out <laughs> soon and just like everybody else we're we're uh, we're in this market too so uh that's that's really the only only new news life is good the weather's getting a little bit chillier i had to bust out the the palm tree shirt today to get some good uh some good warm nice. vibes going so uh <laughs> No, I'm uh, I'm at a great spot, feeling good, and um, family's good too. 
Well, it's great. And, and I, I want everybody to know the kind of guy that, that you are. I, I texted you not knowing that you were on vacation. I should probably go on social media a little more from that aspect and uh, see that you were all were on vacation. And, and right away you said, man, I'm in. Uh, and, and you said, I'll, yeah, I'll do it. And then um, been really busy. And you actually reached back out now that you're back from, from your vacation and said, when are we doing this? So uh, that's the kind of guy that, 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 uh, that Vinny is. Again, good friend uh, uh, to, to us and, and his um, – you know, especially, like I said, when my son's in high school and just helping him on that mental space as a pitching, you know, um, having, having somebody that, that's been down that road, that meant a lot to him and therefore obviously meant a lot to us. So um, we'll, uh, we'll put everything in the blog post and the YouTube and all the other places I post this. We'll put all your links uh, for your real estate in case anybody wants to get in contact with you and uh, get in that market. Okay. Yeah, absolutely, man. Well, I appreciate awesome. you. Thanks for coming on today. Um, you know, it's, it's always fun and, and uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll be in touch again soon. Hopefully maybe we'll do another one where we have a little better connection next time, but, but uh, it's been great having you on, man. I appreciate it. Go Raiders. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Go tribe, go Raiders. You got it. Right. <laughs> Thanks Vinny. We'll talk soon. Yeah. Take care. All right. Bye-bye.